Hey guys, this is Srini here and welcome back. In this video, let's have a look at how principal component analysis can help us speed up machine learning training. In the last video, we looked at how it can be used for non-image type of data. We had breast cancer measurement data, so where you have a radius mean and like 30 different columns and we brought it down to five columns or five features and we didn't see a significant advantage in speed because it was very fast to begin with you know, two and a half seconds versus 2.4 seconds or something. So uh, now let's see if we can see some difference uh, by applying this on multi-class image classification example. And for that, I do have, again, this is exactly the same example I used in my video 158B, where I talked about using pre-trained network for image classification as part of transfer learning. I definitely encourage you to watch that if you haven't, but if you already know what this concept is, go ahead and watch this uh, video in its entirety. Anyway, so we have four classes. I downloaded about 70 images for each of these classes, uh, you know, barn, dog park, landscape, and sunset. And these, uh, I cannot share these images. Uh, I just downloaded them from Google for this purpose, you know, uh, and I do not own them, so I can't share them. But it's easy for you to download, right? A few lines of code to download stuff from Google and then delete them after you're done. Okay, so this is the case. Uh, we have four uh, classes, uh, so this is a multi-class problem. You can also work with CIFAR dataset or any other datasets. I do not like to work with MNIST or CIFAR and these type because there are a million examples online how to do those things, but then when it comes to your own stuff, you may not know how to do it, right? So that's why I like to do my own stuff here. Okay, I downloaded this, put them in these four folders, all set, right? So first thing, without principal component analysis or anything, how do we do this classification? You probably know this, but it's worth going through this one time just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, so we are importing the right uh, libraries here. And again, uh, anything I'm showing, it should work on Python 3.5, 3.7, uh, with uh, TensorFlow 2 and Keras. So nothing tricky in this case, basically. If it doesn't work for you, let me know. Okay, so uh, one key thing here, we are importing VGG16 because we want to use pre-trained weights. Now, uh, here we are just going through our training and uh, you know the folders I just showed you, as you can see, and then assigning the label as the folder name. Okay, so the label is sunset and you know barn and so on. Now here, let's actually do the exactly the same for testing data, the ones from test folders, and then let's encode the labels because you cannot just use barn and you know sunset. You need to have like zero, one, two, three. So that's exactly what we are doing here. So finally, split my data into training and testing data sets. So if I look at again, this is nothing tricky, right? I mean, this is something we have done many, many, many times. So you have X train, Y train, and Y train goes from zero, one, two, three, representing barn, dog park, or sunset, and so on. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Now we are all set. At this point, I would like to scale the pixel values to between zero and one because again, normalization scaling can be very important, uh, uh, especially for you know images and any type of data. Okay, and then uh, this is categorical. Uh, we need to apply categorical labels, so you need to do one hot encoding. Again, I made a video on this. If you don't know what I mean, I mean, uh, if you don't know what I mean in this case, yeah. Okay, so now we are defining our model. Our model is basically our VGG model where we are uh, the one that's trained on ImageNet but without the dense layers, only the convolutional layers. And now, I mean, of course, if you want, you can go ahead and look at the summary. I'm setting all the layers as non-trainable because we just want uh, we just want to use it as a feature extractor, that's it. Okay, here is the model. Okay, so far so good and nothing different here, okay? So everything that we have done in the last tutorial. Now let's actually uh, extract the features because so far what we did is this model here is basically a feature extractor. Now let's apply that, meaning let's extract features from training and testing images. That's exactly what we are doing here. We are extracting features. This may be a bit slow. Okay, so it took a few seconds there, not bad. Now if you look at your train features here, Okay, train features. We have uh, 320 images altogether, and uh, 
total number of features 32,768. That's the total number of features. Again, go ahead and study this, why we have 32,768, but that's the that's the case here. So 320, 320 images and these many. Uh, okay, so now what do we do? Let's go ahead and define our neural network uh, where Let's print out the summary. So this is this is what we plan on using. Okay, the input is how many ever images and 32,768 features, and we use dense layers to uh, 256, and then finally four. Why four? We have four classes. That's pretty much it. So let's use categorical cross entropy because this is multi-class problem, and uh, let us start the time and end the timer so we can see how long it takes. And let's do 20 epochs. In the interest of time, just 20 epochs. By no means this is enough images or enough number of epochs, but hopefully I want to make a point here. So let's go ahead and run this, and I will pause the video while it's running, but you'll see how this can be a bit slow. It's not in the sense it takes a few seconds. Okay, I'll speed this part of the video. <laughs> this is 100% accuracy. We probably didn't even need uh, 20 epochs, but that's okay. Uh, this uh, th That's pretty good, actually. I mean, our model is working very well. And uh, I think we can stop right here uh, because uh, I'm curious about this execution time. But let's also look at accuracy to see uh, obviously accuracy is 100%, but let's do our routine thing. I'd be surprised if it shows anything other than 100%. Well, accuracy is 0 0.9. Uh, well, that was that uh, accuracy. Okay, so here the accuracy probably was on training data. Now we are actually doing this on testing, so fine. Okay, that makes sense. Now our accuracy is 0 0.9, okay? Uh, where are we? Sorry, yeah, these are test labels and predict test. So, so far so good. Not bad actually, 90% accuracy is pretty good. And if you want, you can plot the confusion matrix and just look at the heat map. Uh, so this is how we have done in the last in the last tutorial. There are only two images that are misclassified for this class. Otherwise, everything else is good. Okay, now let's jump into using principal component analysis for this. So, um, since most of the data is the same, I plan on not uh, doing anything after test features. Well, I mean, before test features, up to this point, it's exactly the same, okay? Previously, we just took these test features, I think, yeah? And then defined our feature extractor, and we kind of extracted features of those test uh, features, whatever that thing is, go through the code. So now, instead of doing that, I want to take these features 32,000 how many ever features, right? Uh, 32,768 and bring it down to, I don't know, 200, 300, I don't know, uh, maybe 100, okay? So uh, how do we know how many features we need to get down to? First of all, let's import PCA from scikit-learn and we do exactly the same thing we did the last time. For every number of components from zero to 300, well, one to 300, go ahead and plot out the amount of information contained within these number of principal components. So while it's doing that, let me explain. If you have 10 top principal components, how much information is contained in those 10 compared to the original, okay? So if we get to the plots here, you can see that for 50, first 50 principal components, they represent about 40 to 45% of the total information, which means 55 percent of information is gone. I don't like that. 200 is probably okay, 80. Let's go ahead and do the full 300. Let's do 300 components, which gives us almost uh, 80, 90 plus percent of the information contained in the original data. What is original data? Original data has 32,768, if I'm not wrong, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And these 320 are 320 different images, okay? And 32,768 is that many columns. So let's take the 300 and fit PCA and transform our test features, which was the original input that was supposed to go in, but now we are changing the number of uh, features there. So hopefully all of this makes sense. So let's go ahead and run this. The whole point is, if you watched here, to fit this principal component analysis, it's super fast. But if it takes a long time to do the principal component analysis, you're not gaining much time 
between using all 32,000 and doing this. It's basically which one is faster. That's the whole point here. So now if you look at test PCA or train PCA, for example, now we have a data frame of size or a NumPy area of size 320 by 300. That's it instead of 320 by 32,768. So the training should be like that in few seconds. But is the accuracy good or bad? That we'll have to see, okay? So there you go. So now everything else is exactly the same. Our model is the same. The way we compile it is the same. And the way we fit it is the same, except we are fitting it on the train PCA data. That's it, okay? So let's go ahead and what did we do the last time? Okay, and run these lines of code and it should be quick. There you go. <laughs> we still got our accuracy on training data to be one. Uh, and uh, it took only 0.775 uh, you know, uh, seconds. I should have copied the previous one. How long did it take? 22.8 seconds, 22.9 seconds the last time. This time it took 0.77 seconds. That's how much faster it is right now. Just imagine doing exactly the same with thousands of images, okay? It can be that much faster. Now, oh, after all that, how is my accuracy? Let's check it. My accuracy is 90%. I didn't lose much of anything. In fact, let's do, I'm a bit surprised actually. I was expecting 80% or something. Let's look at the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix is, uh, these two are identical. Previously we had five, well, the previous graph is right there. So that's what we had before uh, PCA. This is what we have after PCA. Pretty much the same accuracy as you can see. I mean, one class is here and there, but not much. So in summary, principal component analysis can be a great tool to speed up your machine learning. Uh, especially when you have uh, a lot of data, okay? So please use this wisely. Again, principal component analysis does not mean it's picking only a subset of the features that you have. It's remapping the features that you have into a new space altogether where each component is orthogonal to each other, okay? Read up on this topic if you're curious about it. So thank you very much. And in the next tutorial, let's cover something else that hopefully you'll find useful and interesting.